Hello friends, welcome to GYAS. How are you? I hope you are doing well. So friends, as you know that on our channel, we are covering the syllabus of UPSC Civil Services. And for that purpose, we have started multiple series on our channel that target your prelims as well as mains. So currently we have 10 series that focus on your prelims and one series that is mains oriented. So in these series, what we do, we daily cover two, two topics and, uh, and uh, what, we do, uh, what we do in these two topics, we daily discuss time and, and MCQs of each topic. So in this manner, we cover daily uh, 30, 20 to 30 questions uh, in total by, by, by dividing them into two topics. So uh, uh, friends, we have uh, marked 10 topics for your prelims, uh, prelims for, for your prelims purposes. So we will cover them in a, in a kind of cyclic fashion. For, for example, today two topics are covered, then tomorrow two topics will be covered and then the day after tomorrow two topics will be covered and this in this manner in five day a one cycle will be complete and in this manner we will continue to do so till 31st May. So friends why the date chosen has been 31st May because in 2nd June is the prelims of UPSC CSC 2019. So friends let's start a discussion so today is lecture uh, lecture number three of science and technology. So let's see what is the first question. The first question is what is internet of things? Uh, uh, is It is internet working of physical devices and objects to communicate uh, without requiring human interference, B it is a more secure form of virtual private network, uh, C it is a centralized surveillance system for monitoring internet, D it is a common domain that will host all mother sites on the web. So let me tell you friends that the answer is A that is uh, uh, it is internet working of physical devices and objects to communicate without requiring human interference. So Internet of Things is basically it is a kind of uh, internet working between different physical devices without without the need of human interference. So this is about it. First question. So let let's move on to the second question. Second question is consider the following about the Large Hadron Collider. So Large Hadron Collider. We ha we have to choose the statements about it. First, the term hadron in the LHC refers to the composite particles composed of quarks uh, quarks held together by the gravitational force. Second, to allow for the collision of high energy particles, uh, cryogenic stage temperature is maintained in the accelerator. Third, it consists of a long ring ring of superconducting magnets with the number of accelerating structures to boost the energy of particles along the way. Let me tell you, friends, that the first is wrong statement because these uh, quarks uh, are are they cannot be held by a weak gravitational force. So quarks are uh, actually held by a strong strong uh, electromagnetic force. So first is incorrect, but let me tell you that second and third is correct. So the answer is B. That is second and third only. So here is the justification. So it is held together by strong force that is electromagnetic force. So these are uh, these. This is the explanation. So let's move on to the third question. The third question is: What is an important? Uh, what is an important mode of transmission for which of the which of the following communicable diseases? First, measles. Second, polio. Third, cholera. Fourth, hepatitis B. Five, tuberculosis. So we have to choose that water is is uh, uh, in which of the following? Uh, which of the following diseases can transmit itself through water? So let me tell you, friends, that measles is a viral disease. It doesn't uh, uh, transfer itself through through. Through uh, through water, let me tell you that uh, the, the the diseases that transmit themselves through water are polio, cholera, and hepatitis B. So measles is also a viral disease. Polio is also a viral disease, and cholera is basically a bacterial disease. And hepatitis B is a viral disease, and tuberculosis is a uh, bacterial disease. So the answer is two, three, and four only. So C is the answer because polio, cholera, and hepatitis B can be carried out through the can can be carried to the host through water. So measles is a virus, and it basically spreads through the air. Polio is uh, a virus that can spread through air and water and cholera and typhoid are bacteria that can spread through water and cholera also spread, spreads through food and hepatitis B is a viral disease and it spreads through water and tuberculosis is a bacterial disease which spread through the air. So the patient who is suffering from the tuberculosis is, uh, has to be kept in complete isolation in such cases. Let's move on to the fourth question. Fourth question is why medical practitioners and policy makers often discourage the growing use of antibiotic for treatment of common diseases. First, antibiotics do not fight infections caused by viruses. Second, some bacteria are able to resist the effects of an antibiotic and multiply in numbers of numbers by way of natural selection. So we have to choose the correct statement. Let me tell you friends that both of these are correct statements. Antibiotics are not effective in case of viruses. They are in fact effective. They are effective only in case of dealing with the bacterial disease bacteria. So also friends, uh, these uh, these medical practitioners and policy makers uh, 
suggest uh, suggest kind of avoiding antibiotic taking antibiotic because uh, because the when when the course is not completed then then the these these bacteria that 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 live in the, in the host and cause disease they they kind of by the way of natural selection they kind of de develop a kind of resistance to 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 the to the to the antibiotic and the, and thus for the future this antibiotic doesn't affect that uh, particular uh, uh, disease causing uh, bacteria so that's why the the, the disease uh, the bacteria becomes drug resistant and it becomes very difficult to uh, to to kind of cure the, the patient so that's why policy makers discourage the growing use of antibiotics so both are correct so the answer is both one and two so basically these infections like uh, uh, cold like flu and sore throats bronchitis all they are they are viral they are viral problems in which in which case the antibiotics is not effective in in that case only these uh, these vir uh, 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 in bacterial diseases only this uh, by, by uh, these uh, this antibiotics work so this they also develop my, microorganisms and some, sometimes develop resistance so micro uh, the, uh, these microorganisms may include bacteria fungi virus and parasites so let's move on to the next question fifth question fifth question is blind spot in human eye can be found at a junction of the optic nerve and retina uh, b left hand of ciliary muscles c center of eye lens d both ends of cornea so let me tell you friends that the correct answer is a that is at the junction of optic nerve and uh, retina let me tell you friends that uh, in our eye uh, the the light converges uh, uh, in the back portion so that back portion is covered by retina so that in uh, the retina has basically nerve cells which sense this uh, this light and then these nerve cells uh, transfer the transfer the signal to the uh, uh, to the brain through optic nerve so at the junction of optic nerve and retina uh, comes the blind spot so the answer is a so i have provided you in detail explanation already let's move on to the sixth question sixth question is consider the following statements about protozoa first protozoa can feed on bacteria and fungi second protozoa give off nitrogen after digesting their food third malaria is caused by protozoa so we have to choose the correct statement let me tell you friends that the correct statement is all of these are correct the protozoa can feed on bacteria as well as fungi and they give off nitrogen after digesting their food which is used by uh, the the uh, the organisms that are quite complex and malaria is caused by protozoa so it is correct so all of these are correct so this is the answer so these protozoa digest their food in stomach like compartments and they they, they do some most of the protozoa do not do not harm us but sometimes they cause diseases like uh, like this uh, uh, one type of amoeba can can cause can live in human intestines and that is uh, that it feeds on red blood cells and causes a disease known as dysentery and another type is of uh, uh, of a protozoa that causes the malaria problem so let's move on to the seventh question seventh question is india has officially declared itself free from which of the following diseases first chikungunya second polio three yaws uh, fourth avian influenza fifth leprosy sixth smallpox so let me tell you friends the uh, living chikungunya all of these have been declared by india as eliminated from india but let me tell you friends that recently uh, the cases of leprosy have emerged again so this is a cause of concern so but but the answer would be yes india has officially declared itself uh, uh, free from leprosy so 3 2 3 4 5 6 uh, these these are all uh, eliminated from india while chikungunya uh, still exists in india so it is chikungunya is basically caused by the mosquitoes so the answer is second 3 th uh, 2 3 4 5 and 6 so the solution is c so th this is the explanation so india has become the first country in the world to get the yaws free uh, yaws free certificate by the who and also who has declared influenza uh, avian influenza uh, uh, from uh, that eliminate uh, that uh, that avian influenza has been eliminated from india and leprosy was officially declared to be eradicated uh, to be eradicated in 2005 but many cases are still found in india and smallpox was declared by who to be eradicated in 1979 from the world so let's move on to the eighth question next question is having two eyes instead of only one accords human beings which of the following vision related advantages first depth of the field can be perceived more correctly with two eyes second width of fields uh, increases with two eyes so friends we have to choose which of the above statements is correct let me tell you that both of these statements are correct so c is correct answer so so basically they provide us the advantage and they expand our field view and also they increase the depth of our field view so two eyes provide us a kind of uh, kind of a field view of about 180 degrees while one one eye provides a field view of only 150 degree so this is about your uh,
Next question. Let's move on to the ninth question. Ninth question is Newland's law of active uh, octaves is related to a composition of music, c classification of elements, c changing phases of matter, d distribution of mass in solar system. So we have to choose the correct statement. Let me tell you, friends, uh, uh, that uh, here we have to choose the correct option. So it is related to. Let me tell you, friends, it is related to classification of elements. So basically, Newland was a person who who arranged the elements in the increasing order of their atomic mass so uh, so it uh, the, it he classified elements on the basis of atomic mass and he arranged the elements in the increasing order of their atomic mass so please remember it that john New newlands was a english scientist and who arranged the non elements in the order of increasing or, or atomic masses so he started with the element having the low, lowest atomic mass that is hydrogen and ended it with thorium thor ended at thorium with the, which was the 56th element so he found that eighth element had properties similar to that of first so he compared this to the octaves found in music and thus he called it as law of octaves or also known as newland's law of octaves so this is about your ninth question so uh, in newland's octave the properties of lithium and sodium uh, were found to be uh, be same sodium is the eighth element after lithium lithium is similarly beryllium and magnesium resemble each other so this is about law newland's law of octaves which is basically classification of elements in the increasing order of their atomic mass let's move on to the 10th question 10th question is which of the following are plant hormones one thyroxin second gibbon Lines, three cytokinin, fourth estrogen. So we have to choose the correct statement. Let me tell you, friends, that uh, uh, the the thyroxine is not a plant uh, a hormone, and also the estrogen is not a plant hormone. But yes, second and third are uh, plant hormones. So gibberellin basically regulates uh, the growth and development of the plant, and also cytokinin it helps in the cell division. So it 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 helps at at the roots and the shoots. Uh, so it it helps in in the in the in the root growth or the shoot growth of the plant. So the answer is second and third only. So the answer is B. So here is solution. So gibberellins are plant hormones that regulate growth and influence various development processes, including stem elongation, germination, dormancy, flowering, sex expression, enzyme induction, and leaf and fruit sen uh, senses. So uh, they also cite this cytokinesis. They promote cell division in plants and roots, plant roots and shoots. Thus, they regulate the growth of plant roots and shoots. But uh, they, but there are also other hormones of plants like the abscisic acid, which is one of the example of a hormone which inhibits growth. so when it 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 starts it's uh, releasing the growth of the plant uh, it, it 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 stops and after that uh, also there is auxin uh, that uh, that uh, that causes uh, plant growth so let's move on to the 11th question so these are the questions next five questions are from current affair so 11th question is agni consider the following statements about agni 1 missile one it is long range surface to surface ballistic missile with specialized navigation system to guide it second it is developed by drdo as a part of integrated guided missile development project third it is a single stage missile powered by solid propellants so friends let me tell you that the correct statement is two and third only first is incorrect because it is not long range surface to surface missile it is actually short range surface to surface ballistic missile but yes it has it is ballistic missile and it is surface to surface but let me tell you friends it is it is short wave and not long wave so it is short wave uh, sorry short range surface to surface ballistic missile with specialized navigation system to guide it and yes friends it was developed by drdo as part of its uh, as uh, its integrated guided missile development program and yes it is a single stage missile powered by solid propellant so uh, only second and thir third is correct so the answer is a so here is the answer so about agni it is a short range ballistic missile and it has a specialized navigation system so it was basically it is a single stage missile powered by solid uh, propellants and it was developed after the Kar kargil war to fill the gap between 250 km range of prithvi 2 and 2500 km range of agni 2 and it was developed by the advanced systems laboratory of the premium missile de premier de missile development laboratory of drdo so it is 15 meter long and yes it can carry the payload can, pay, can carry a payload of uh, of 1000 kg and 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 has uh, already been inducted into the indian army me and and also friends let me tell you that uh, this uh, this is capable of carrying nuclear warheads also so let's move on to the 12th question consider the following statements about the quadricycles quadricycles is a vehicle of the size of a three wheeler but with four tires and fully covered like a car second recently the ministry of road transport and highways has approved the sale of quadricycles for personal use by notifying the insertion of them as a non transport vehicle under the motor vehicles act 1998 so we have to choose the correct statement so let me tell you friends that both of these statements are correct yes quadricycle 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 is a type of vehicle which is the size of a three three wheeler but it is it has four tires 
as earlier it was it was a kind it was it 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 came under the category of a transport vehicle but it is it has been recently uh, notified by by the uh, by the government in under the motor vehicles act 1988 as non transport vehicle that is now it can be used for personal use also but let me tell you that now uh, it cannot be used for transport purposes like transporting or for carrying luggages uh, but yes it can be used for personal purposes for carrying the passengers so this uh, this for, for carrying the uh, the uh, personal personal uses means by, by the usage by, of the fam by, uh, by the family members so the answer is uh, uh, one and two both so the solution is c so here is the explanation so it is basically a three uh, three three wheeler sized four tire vehicle so it has been recently notified as non transport vehicle under the motor vehicles act 1988 which will allow its personal use so basically it is to provide more uh, more mobility options to the people uh, so that they can move to 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 four wheelers from two wheelers but uh, yes it the advantage is that it is cheap and safe mode of transport but exceptions are that they cannot it they cannot be used for carrying uh, for transporting cargo or luggage and the impact on auto industry is that that the, that the car makers will be affected because it will be much cheaper fact is that uh, cute is the first locally produced quadricycle and it is produced by the bajaj auto limited and let me tell you friends that the the issue is of about the safety and emission norms because safety is not that much uh, is of not that much level in these quadricycles and also emission norms are not met so this is the issue so let's move on to the next question 13th question consider the following statements about kepler space telescope first it was designed and developed by european space agency second it was designed to survey a region of milky way galaxy and was launched in 2009 so we have to choose the correct statement let me tell you friends that the first statement is incorrect because kepler space telescope was not developed by european space agency in fact it was developed by nasa so second is correct yes it was de developed to uh, survey our region of milky way galaxy and was launched in 2009 so the solution is b so here is uh, explanation so recently it has run out of fuel so it will be now now it will now retire after its 9 uh, and a nine and a half year of mission and it is orbiting 156 million km from uh, uh, km from the earth about around the sun so it uh, now the engineers would would will turn off its radio transmitters and it is basically it was it was uh, kind of designed and developed by nasa to survey our region of milky way galaxy galaxy to discover hundreds of earth size and smaller planets so for that matter exoplanet so this is about your third in question so let's move on to the uh, 14th question 14th question is consider the following uh, about isros at astrosat first astro uh, astrosat is india's first dedicated multi wavelength space observatory second astrosat is designed to observe the universe in the visible ultraviolet low and high energy x ray regions of the electromagnetic spectrum third india is the fifth nation to have its own space observatory so let me tell you friends that we have to choose the correct answer and all of these statements are correct yes it is of india's first dedicated uh, multi wavelength space observatory astrosat is also designed to observe the universe in the visible uv low and high energy x rays regions of electromagnetic magnetic spectrum and yes india is the fifth nation to have its own space observatory after this us russia europe europe and japan so india has entered the lead uh, club of nations that have their own space observatory so the answer is c that is 1 2 and 3 all are correct so here is the explanation so it was developed by and designed by isro so it is basically to under, to, to 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 have a more detailed understanding of our universe and it is designed to observe universe in the visible uv low and high energy x ray regions of the electromagnetic spectrum so this was developed by isro and now india has uh, has entered the elite club of nations that have their own on this uh, this uh, the, that have their own own uh, space ob observation uh, uh, observatories so this is all about friends today's lecture if you like the questions if you like the video then please like it share it with your friends and also do subscribe to our channel do not forget to press the bell icon because then only you will get all the important notifications relating to upsc csc 2019 and lastly friends let me announce to you people that you who those people who want to get the pdfs of these mcqs they can contact us at this email id that is achieveis21 @gmail.com or for and or, or the contact number is 89684264811 so you can contact us at this number or for that matter at at this email id in case you want to subscribe to the pdfs of these discussions so friends uh, uh, obviously there will be certain cost for these pdfs because as we are putting in lot of efforts so certainly we need some some money for our sustainability as well as for our motivation purposes so in case you want to get the pdfs you can contact us so why these pdfs are important because at the end of the day you will not be able to revise uh, the revise your syllabus through uh, 20 to 30 minute long videos or for that matter by reading the standard books or any
NCRTs because at that time you will have to revise multiple topics and relying on videos or for that matter on standard books or NCRTs will be an utter wastage of time or for that purpose you must have some kind of notes for to for revision purposes and this PDFs are these PDFs are made in uh, keeping in mind your uh, syllabus pattern and they they will cover your syllabus comprehensively because each question carry explanation in detail so which 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 helps you in in revision so it also helps in faster as well as multiple time revision and also it helps in clearing your important concepts so that's why these PDFs are important and if you are willing to join uh, to get the these these PDFs then you can contact us at this email ID or at this contact number that is eight nine six eight four two six four Eight months. So this is all about friends today's video. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you very much.